All right, guys, right now, there are two totally different conversations about AI, and they sound like they're from different planets. In one room, you have the believers, the VCs and founders betting on AGI, the singularity, the next fire or electricity moment. They're writing checks, they look like typos. And in the other room, the skeptics, the analysts staring at failed pilots in insane cloud bills yelling one word, it's a bubble. So in this video, I'm gonna break down what the two different groups of people are saying and reveal the truth behind it. Let's get into it. Okay, so first of all, I was listening to this interview with Jeff Bezos and what he said about AI is really going to change the way you think about it. Listen to this. And when bubbles happen, that's one thing that happens. The second thing that happens when people get very excited as they are today about artificial intelligence, for example, is every experiment gets funded. Every company gets funded, the good ideas and the bad ideas. And investors have a hard time in the middle of this excitement distinguishing between the good ideas and the bad ideas. And so that's also probably happening today. Um, but it doesn't mean that anything that's happening isn't real. Like AI is real. And it is going to change every industry. In fact, it's a very unusual technology in that regard in that it's a horizontal enabling layer. Today we talk about AI first companies like OpenAI and Anthropic and Mistral and so on and so on and so on. There are so many startup companies that are kind of AI companies of various kinds. And that's normal for this phase. But that is not the biggest impact that AI is gonna have. The biggest impact that AI is going to have is it is going to affect every company in the world. It is going to make their quality go up and their productivity go up. Uh, it, it's, I mean, by every company, I literally mean every company, every manufacturing company, every hotel, every you know, consumer products company, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so that is hard to fathom, but it's real. There is no doubt, we don't know how long it will take exactly, we don't know how quickly that transition will occur, and it'll probably occur at different rates in different industries, but that is very real. Now, what the stock market does, which is when we think of bubbles, we think of valuations and market caps and things like this, and how many billions of dollars are being invested in these six people at a $20 billion valuation, even though they just started yesterday, right? That's very unusual behavior. This, investors don't usually give a team of six people a couple of billion dollars with no product. It's rare, and that's happening today. But the great thing about industrial bubbles, this is a kind of industrial bubble, the ones that are industrial are not nearly as bad. They could even be good, because when the dust settles and you see who are the winners, society benefits from those inventions. They still get those life-saving drugs. And that's what's gonna happen here too. This is real. The benefits to society from AI are going to be gigantic. That right there, that is the whole story. He's saying two things that sound like they can't both be true at the same time. Yes, there's a bubble full of bad ideas getting funded, and yes, the underlying technology is one of the most real and transformative things to ever happen. So how do we square that circle? How do we navigate a world where both of those things are happening at the same time? Because so much of the conversation around this is missing that nuance. People are either screaming bubble or they're screaming revolution. And the truth is, it's both. Look, I know Sam Altman was talking about this month ago, but the reason I'm hitting it now is because the evidence we have today is on a completely different level. The numbers are bigger, the stakes are even higher, and the absurdity is just, it's cranked up to 11, and it's forcing me to rethink everything. The premise is simple. Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, the man at the absolute epicenter of the hype, started whispering the B word. He warned that many AI company valuations are completely disconnected from reality. And my first thought, and probably yours too, was why? Why would the guy whose company benefits most from this insane energy 
pour even a single drop of cold water on his own fire. I don't know his exact motive, but it feels honest. It feels like a genuine attempt to separate the signal from the noise. Because the truth here isn't a simple yes or no. The answer is nuanced. It's a story of two completely different markets happening at the exact same time. And to understand it, you have to look at the evidence for both sides. So first, let's look at the evidence for pure, uncut financial insanity. Exhibit A, the reputation round. This is a new phenomenon. We're not talking seed rounds or Series A anymore. We're in the era of the reputation round, where the founder's rec record is the only collateral needed for a multi-billion dollar valuation. Case in point, Mira Marathi. You know the name, the former CTO of OpenAI, the person responsible for shipping products like GPT-4 and DALI, a verified A-list operator. She leaves OpenAI to start her own as yet unnamed AI company. And she raises $2 billion with a B. Let that sink in for a second. This is for a company with no product, no revenue, no customers at the moment of funding. It is a pitch deck and a world-class resume. The investor sentiment is so completely off the charts, the FOMO so thick, you could cut it with a knife, that the reputation of one person is now worth a $2 billion bet. That's not just funding a company, that's funding a person. It's a brand new investment thesis. But honestly, in this market, that's just the appetizer. Exhibit B, the $32 billion idea. This is where it gets truly wild. Enter Ilya Sukkever, the co-founder, the former chief scientist at OpenAI. Many would call him the spiritual and technical heart of their research. The co-author of the legendary AlexNet paper that basically kicked off the entire deep learning revolution a decade ago. He was literally in charge of making sure AI aligns with humanity. He leaves to start his own company with a singular laser-focused mission, Safe Superintelligence Inc., SSI. He also raises $2 billion. And the valuation that they're targeting, the number that investors have reportedly agreed this pre-product, pre-revenue research lab is worth? A cool $32 billion. $32 billion. This man essentially snapped his fingers and a company worth more than Dropbox, more than Rivian, more than a huge chunk of the S&P 500 just materialized. This isn't a unicorn. A unicorn is a quaint little farm animal compared to this. This is a mythological beast from another dimension riding a rocket ship made of pure, uncut investor panic. A valuation this high for what is essentially a research project with a handful of employees is not normal. It breaks every traditional model of finance. So you look at all that. You see the money flying around and you have to think, this is a bubble. This is a casino. It has to be right? But then you listen to the other side of the argument. You listen to the quiet part that the people writing the checks are saying out loud. And you realize this isn't about traditional metrics at all. This is about a one-time bet on the future of civilization. What most people don't get is that the bet here isn't on a better chatbot or a new SaaS product. It's not about quarterly earnings or profit margins. The bet is on cracking the code of intelligence itself. It's a bet on creating a technological event that fundamentally changes the human trajectory. And this is where our grains fail us. We think in linear terms. We think about adding. But this isn't about adding. It's about compounding. An AI that is smart enough to improve its own intelligence creates a slightly smarter AI. That smarter AI can then improve itself even faster, creating an even smarter AI. It's a runaway chain reaction, an intelligence explosion. The value created by that doesn't follow a curve on a graph. It becomes a vertical line. The first entity to achieve this doesn't just win the market. It becomes the market. And that brings me to Mark Zuckerberg. His thesis is one of the most important things you can hear to understand this moment. Well, <laughs> no. Well, I was going to say, in the grand scheme, it is it is objectively a huge amount of money. Yeah. Right. I mean, didn't you just tell Trump you were going to spend like six hundred billion? I mean, that's, that's I did. Yeah, through twenty twenty eight, which is that's um, a lot of money. It is, and and if and if um and if we end up misspending a couple of hundred billion dollars, I think that that is going to be very unfortunate, obviously, <laughs> but. 
what I'd say is I actually think the risk is higher on the other side. Hmm. If you if you um, build too slowly, and then super intelligence is possible in three years, but you built it out assuming it would be there in five years, then you're just out of position on what I think is going to be the most important technology that enables the most new products and innovation and value creation and history. Hmm. So, um, so I don't know. I mean, it's um, I don't want to be kind of cavalier about it. I mean, obviously these are very large amounts of money and we're trying to get it right. Mm -hmm. But I think the risk, at least for a company like Meta, is probably in not being aggressive enough rather than being somewhat too aggressive. He's spending billions, maybe hundreds of billions on AI infrastructure and research. He's building data centers the size of small cities. And he basically says the risk of spending all that money and being wrong is nothing compared to the risk of not spending it and being left behind. This is the key. It's not just FOMO. It is existential FOMO. It is the fear of being rendered obsolete. Think about what that means for a company like Meta or Google. If they miss this wave, if OpenAI or SSI or some unknown startup cracks AGI first, then Facebook and Instagram and Google search don't just become less profitable, they become historical footnotes. They become the modern day equivalent of a railroad company after the invention of the airplane. From that perspective, a 32 billion valuation for a company led by one of the handful of people on planet Earth who might have a real shot at achieving superintelligence, suddenly it doesn't sound so crazy. It sounds like a desperate, high stakes, all in bet on the future of humanity. It's a lottery ticket with a potential payout that's literally the entire world economy. So, this is the dual reality we live in. We have on paper valuations that look insane, and on the ground, technological justification that makes them seem almost rational. The bears see the froth. They see the failed AI pilots and the headlines that scream, 95% of AI projects don't deliver ROI. And they're thinking the whole thing is a house of cards. They're comparing this to the dot-com bubble. And that is the wrong analogy. This isn't the dot-com bubble. That's thinking too small. This is the invention of electricity. When electricity was first rolled out, can you imagine trying to calculate the ROI? Okay, so we're gonna spend millions to wire up this entire city so that a few rich people can have light bulbs instead of candles. The initial use case looked trivial, a luxury good, but electricity wasn't a product, it was a platform. It was a new foundational layer for everything that came after it. It enabled radios and refrigerators and factories and television and eventually the entire digital world. No one in 1890 could have predicted the internet, but the grid they were building made it possible. That's what AI is. It's not a single product. It is a new utility, a utility for intelligence. The companies spending billions right now aren't just building an app. They're building the new electrical grid. So here's my take. Here's how I square the circle that Bezos and Altman laid out. Is there a bubble? Yes, absolutely there is. A massive, frothy, dangerous bubble in what I call the AI wrapper companies. The hundreds, maybe thousands of startups that are just a thin user interface on top of an open AI API call. They have no moat, no defensible technology, and they will be washed away when the funding dries up or when the foundational models just absorb their features. That part of the market will absolutely pop, and it will be brutal, just like Pets.com. But... Is the core thesis of AI overhyped? Is the foundational layer a mirage? Absolutely not. The lesson of the dot-com bust wasn't that the internet was a fad. The lesson was that the internet was so powerful that it wiped out the weak ideas and cleared the way for the strong ones to conquer the world. Amazon survived. Google was born from the ashes. We are in a dual reality market. There's a speculative bubble on the surface full of hopefuls and copycats, but underneath it, there is a bedrock technological shift that is not going away. The companies building the actual infrastructure, the ones laying the electrical grid for intelligence like NVIDIA or building the power plants like OpenAI and Anthropic and Google, their valuations might seem crazy now, but they could look cheap in a decade. The real question isn't, is this a bubble? The real question is, when the froth gets wiped away, who will be left standing on the foundation? Because those are the companies that are going to build the future. But let me know what you guys think. Am I crazy? Are you seeing it differently? Drop a comment below. Let's talk about it.